Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Welcome to the Strategic Hot Box. It's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic, and I am excited that you're here with me. This is going to be an amazing episode because we're switching things up. We've talked a lot about women in leadership, and now it's time to talk about men in leadership. Men as entrepreneurs. We're getting cheering from the studio. Woo! It's time to talk about entrepreneurs, dads, and how we handle things in business. All right, let's get started. As you know, here at the Strategic Hot Box, we break it down into the learn, the love, and the kick ass. As you know, it's my philosophy, it's my mantra, it's how we build our episodes, but it's also how we build what we believe to be the method, the ingredients, the the strategy for success. And in the learn section, we talk about a new topic. Today, we're going to talk about entrepreneurial dads. Um, we have an amazing guest and subject matter expert here with us today. His name is J.R. Tolver, and I'll tell you a little bit more about him in just a second. In the love section, we get to know somebody that is great, as I mentioned our guest. We also talk about relationships, how we can work together to create connections and build affinity, build success and synergy into the future together one another with one another. And in the kick-ass section, as always, I promise to give you some things that you need to do and start doing differently today. Action items, ways to start kicking ass, because that's the most important. As I've mentioned before, all of this is just a really great discussion. All of this is just you chilling in your car in your commute, listening to this podcast. All of this is just you watching on the computer and and all only thing that matters to me is afterwards, you get up and you make something happen, make something different happen. So when it comes to entrepreneurship and being a dad, as I mentioned, we've talked a lot about women in leadership on the podcast and different guests. We've talked about our wonder women, and I don't want to discount that at all. So in parallel to that, and equally, if not more important, is the role that the dad plays in business, the dad plays in the home, the dad plays in creating balance in a lifestyle. And even Catherine Davis, one of our wonder women, did come on and talk about the evolving role of the working dad and how important it is for families to come together. So whether a family has two moms or two dads or a mom and a dad or multiple variations thereof, it's entirely about how we can all work together to make sure that we're building the family and the value systems and the success that we'd like to see you know, in, in, in a more connected way. And no longer really is it expected for fathers to be the only person bringing in the cash, to be the only sole breadwinner, right? And a lot of times mothers are that as well, or people are equally contributing to the home. As a matter of fact, it's really funny to me, funny, ironic, funny, haha. I mean, however you want to look at it. Uh, I was having conversations with some fellow moms this weekend at a one-year-old birthday party. And we were talking about how, you know, this one mom was talking about that it's difficult, the transition of going back to work. And I agree. And I know several moms that are on the phone will be listening to this as well. It's equally probably as difficult for men in that process, right? Because they're losing just as much sleep most of the time in, in, in the newborn time and era. And when she was talking about that, I did ask, so have you thought about staying at home? And before she could even like progress from having the thought to getting a word out of her mouth, her husband like comes in out of nowhere and pops his head in and is like, we have a mortgage to pay. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, like gone are the days where it's, it's just expected that a woman would stay at home or expected that somebody in the home would stay, would stay home that really it is more even expected for people to contribute on a more equal level. And fathers are taking this role very seriously. And I love it. Whether it's for paternity leave uh, to create a bond with their kids, whether it's having flexible schedules or work hours that allow for a balance for maybe it's for their own personal and social development, or it is about being at home with with the kids, uh, anything they can do from an extracurricular standpoint. And the working mom is just as successful in their leadership journey as the working dad can be. And that 
that that is a, a tremendous growth that we've had in opportunity in this country. For those of you that are listening from other countries, I know that different countries and cultures have different ways and perspectives of talking about this topic. And I'd be very interested to hear about your perspective. So please hit us up on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere, our website, and let us know about where you're at from a cultural perspective, what your thoughts are when it comes to this role of the working dad, working mom, and how it impacts the household um, from your from your side or from your view. Pew Research studies that uh, in the United States, 57% of fathers say that parenting is important to their identity, that being a dad is an important part of their lives. And fathers spend triple the time on childcare today that they did 50 years ago. Now, I absolutely believe that. I could not do what I do today if it weren't for my partner in crime and the father, my, my baby daddy, the father of my children, uh, he is absolutely equal if not more. And I cannot stress that enough that the role that, that uh, my husband or that, that many dads play out there in contributing to being a daddy and contributing to that role in our household. And in households where both parents work, 62% of couples believe that careers are equally important. And this is great. This is a good perspective that we have. Is there still work to do? Sure. And is there a new way to look at this? Absolutely. And I'm going to give you a kind of a glimpse into what that might look like. And then we'll bring in our subject matter expert. Uh, when I had James, so James is my older son. So this is about uh, eight years ago when I had James. Uh, we had, we went into, I say we went into labor because, you know, when if I'm in labor, then, you know, you're the, the men out there that have been in that process or the partners out there that have been through that process. It's, it's not just a sole person going through it, but I went into labor and was there for 36 hours. So it was a very long, that stretched over a couple, three days. Um, and then we were in the hospital because we ended up having to, to have the surgery for another couple days after that. So in the end, we, this process was about five days long. And because of that, my husband had had five days off from work. And so he goes back to work on that following Monday and a couple of his homies that he was working with went, dude, how was your vacation? And he like freaked out and just went, you have got to be kidding me. I mean, one, even if it was the easiest birth ever, it is not a vacation to go through childbirth in any family, right? But secondly, certainly not the experience that he had and the experience that we have with James. And it really does speak to, though, this idea that the world is shifting. You know, is, it a, is, is a man taking care of his children Mr. Mom? Or is a man taking care of his children a badass? That's the challenge that I have for you. And really, I think it's more the latter than it is the former. And I want now to introduce uh, our guest. His name, as I mentioned, is J.R. Tolver. But before I give you too many details, I want to show you a little video about how he describes himself as, well, really a badass. Let's check it out. So I walked out the house this morning, you know, as a, as a former athlete, term businessman is super easy to to get caught up in chasing results not necessarily focusing on the process but what I realized today is I'm a bad man businessman former athlete but more importantly I'm a dad BAD business athlete dad how many bad men are out there doing everything they can do to make sure that the families are taken care of much love happy hunting everybody bad men i love it that's a, such a great way to describe men in this journey now i'd like to formally introduce you to jr he's an owner of the state farm insurance agency he's also previously an nfl player played for the carolina panthers the miami dolphins the dallas cowboys so i'm telling you it's just it's getting better and better he's a sports analyst for nbc san diego he's a pre-game and post-game analyst for san diego state university football iheart media he's an ncaa record holder and he's got his bachelor's in business in inf uh, business administration information technology from San Diego State University. He has certificates from Babson College, University of Notre Dame, and most importantly, he's a proud husband and father. So please join me in welcoming Jr. Hey Jr., how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. So excited that you're here. Thank you. 
<laughs> I was listening when I first saw your video saying that you're you're a bad you know bad dad. I, I absolutely loved it, and I was equally trying to come up with an acronym for mom. I'm like, all right, does that make me a bam? I'm like, it just doesn't <laughs> it doesn't have the same uh, the same impact. Yeah, I know, I know, it's terrible. Um, so tell us a little bit about your journey in leadership. Yeah, it's a it's a great question. It's, it's it's funny because as a as an athlete, most athletes are are very self driven. Um, the the higher you go in your sport, the more internal intrinsic motivation you probably have. And, and football is the ultimate team sport, so it's weird because you can't do anything without everybody else. But you're also not going to be on the field if you don't do your part. And so it's funny just going from being an athlete to being a business owner, just being used to chasing goals and, and, and chasing dreams and, and big visions, but then having these little kids now that, uh, that depend on me, right? So my wife tells me, she's like, there's one thing you've taught me is how to be selfish. She said, because I look at you and I, and, and I see that, you know, your goal is to fulfill your dreams. Now, granted, by fulfilling your dreams and chasing the aspirations that you're chasing, you're also taking care of the family. But it's interesting to see how you can be selfish in the pursuit of what makes you happy and what makes you whole in order to provide for us as a family. So that's kind of the transition I've been going through, how to use my intrinsic motivation, my selfishness, for, for good, not for bad. <laughs> so I have to know, it, when the very first time that your wife asked that question, you know, if someone came up to me and said, one thing I've learned from you is how to be selfish. <laughs> <I'm not> to, <laughs> it's very evolved of you to be able to have, and evolved of her, I should say, to be able to see the bigger picture in that. But to her point and to yours, if you aren't selfish with your own journey and drive for dreams then how will you ever expect to take care of the next generation or the people around you? Yeah, and how do you teach the next generation to also prioritize what matters to them re regardless of the situation, right? So, you know, I took a, a, a organizational or transformational leadership class in Green Bay, and they said people make, decisions that they don't want to make mainly for two reasons, two pressures, financial pressure or social pressure. And I will work jobs that they don't want to work, mm -hmm. do things that they don't necessarily believe in or don't want to do is because they're responding to I social pressure or financial pressure. And you have to be a little bit selfish to remove yourself from the pressure of finances or the pressures of society in order to do what's truly what's truly intrinsic to you. And, and that's tough. It's tough it when is. you have a, a wife and kids and and bills and a business and employees. But but it's hard to really be authentic in leadership if you're not doing things that are natural to you. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it's really important to, to note that for men and people that are athletes and have this perspective, that there's no loss of being just as much of a man, just as much of an athlete, just as much while also being a good father, right? And that sometimes I think gets lost in this, this new era of of you know inclusion, this new era of equal rights it, it, with women and gender roles and those types of things. And um, you'll get a kick out of this story. I, my brother is a power lifter, so he's a very large, building, athletic kind of muscle guy, athlete. And he also is a proud father of three kids, a couple being little girls. And he is goes to the same drop off as one of my girlfriends. And Deja comes up to me the other day and says, "I saw your brother this morning in in the school talking to one of the other dads." about about gains and they were, they were having a big conversation about you know how much they had protein and they were just gaining this and muscle that and just do, having this dude conversation and then he comes out in the parking lot and hops in his white minivan and drives off 
<laughs> and we just cracked up about the fact that he would be the first to say he is a proud owner of a minivan and has just is just enough muscle too. So it can be both, right? You, you know, it's hilarious that I've been trying to convince my wife to buy a minivan for the last probably 18 months and she doesn't want to do it. You know, but I want to do it because, you know, we have three small kids and they're all in car seats. And, you know, what better way to to, to, to get the, the family from point A to point B comfortably than to do it with two sliding doors on the side. So that that's an argument that I'm trying to win right now. So shout out to your brother for, for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for being able to pull that off. <laughs> nice. So how do you feel that uh, this role has evolved? I shared that stat about the fact that, that more men are getting involved, but how has it evolved in the last 20 years as far as men in the home? So that's a great question. I think that, that number one, um, right now my wife is a stay-at-home mom, but that's by choice. She is a a journalist. Um, she went to the new school. She's written cover stories for Jay Z and Lil Wayne wow. and Rihanna for Billboard magazine. And and we made the choice when we started having kids that she stays home while um, the kids are growing up. And, and I think that's a little bit different. I think the expectation has been that the wife stays home with the kids. Um, I think now women are making the choice, despite being very professional, doctors, lawyers, and and in the case of my wife, uh, an award-winning journalist, they're making that choice to stay home. So what that does is that puts pressure on the father to not only uphold his end of the bargain, you know, from a financial standpoint, Point and bring, to bring the money in to, to, to pay the bills. But it also says, when I get home, I, I need to clean up. I need to bathe the kids. I need to, you know, put them to sleep. I need to do all of these other things because my wife isn't staying home because she has to. She's staying home because she wants to. So it's truly a partnership. Um, it's truly a, an, an ecosystem where in order for us to be able to do that for our kids, we have to work together in the business, in our budgeting, in the way we spend money, in the way we save money, but also in the house. You know, what, who's taking the kids to school? Who's putting the kids to sleep? Who's giving them baths? Who's feeding them? So I think that that's where the most involvement has come from. It's truly become a, a partnership between the business and the personal when those um, moms decide Absolutely. To, to stay at home when they don't have to. Do you think that dads in the world today are pulling their weight in the home? So look, I, I'm i going to say yes, but if my wife were sitting right next to me, she'd probably say no, right? <laughs> um, but but it's a conscious effort, right? When I, when I come home, I try to get home every night, two hours before my kids' bedtime. I do that for a couple of reasons. Um, I want to make sure that they see me before they go to sleep. So my routine with them is after they eat, I bathe them, I brush their teeth, I read to them, and then I put them to bed. Um, Some of the other stuff, not leaving my clothes on the floor or cleaning up, that's probably where I don't hold my weight as well. Uh, (laughs) But it's a conscious effort for me to be as involved in, in that side of it as possible. Yeah, and I think it it honestly would would depend on the people that are listening and watching the podcast today. Because from my perspective, uh, my husband certainly is, um, and I think that there a lot of women do experience that 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 men have an equal role, whatever that role is. And I think that it's open to the partnership to be defined. I love that you called it an ecosystem. However, I'm sure there are others that feel differently, right? And that are having a different <laughs> <laughs> different experience at home. And so what's right. an unexpected learning of your journey? What's something that's happened along the way? Really how tough it is to, to truly be selfish, I guess, right? Because uh, the hardest part about being somebody who is intrinsically motivated to keep getting better is that now it's not just about sports. 
You know, my only job used to be get up in the morning, go work out, study my playbook, just make sure I eat what I'm supposed to eat to keep myself healthy. That used to be my only job mm-hmm. as a professional athlete. Now as this professional dad, entrepreneur, former athlete, I have to make sure that I'm doing the stuff that I need to do to keep keep myself healthy, working out, eating right. I have to make sure that the business is being run well um, from a from an operation standpoint, from a sales standpoint, from a motivation of, of my employee standpoint. And then I have to make sure that my kids are not just taken care of financially, but I'm able to support them, you know, emotionally. And then I also have to keep my wife happy, right? So so one of my favorite quotes is, men, we don't multitask well. So on this journey, that has been the hardest part, mm-hmm. is being able to multitask these four different aspects of my life um, and still try to achieve greatness the way that I did when I was singularly focused just on sports. So the father playbook is much more complex than the NFL playbook, you're saying? It is much <laughs> more complex. It's like learning four different offenses <laughs> at the same time. Uh, it's very, very complex. And so it's a balance. It's a juggling act. But I'll tell you this, much more rewarding as well. Yeah, absolutely. Can you share a funny story or something that's happened in your journey? A time that, that the ball was dropped or something happened? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's probably uh, probably just going to go back to um, the things that I forget, you know, whether it be uh, I'm supposed to pick my kids up from school and I got tired of doing something else. So I forgot. And then I have to, you know, figure out how to fix that mess that I just created. It, it, it's more those most of the funny things things that happen in my life are based on this uh, scheduling nightmares that turn into disasters before, before they get cleaned up. You know, your kids are going to have to be in therapy for years for that time you forgot them after school <laughs> when you didn't pick them up. <laughs> but it's so, it's just life. I mean, being a parent, I think that I was, uh, we were actually, I was chatting with my husband the other day saying that when we got married, we w- didn't want people to bring kids to our wedding and that was one of the things that we wanted and now when I get an invite wedding invite that says don't bring kids I think well then I'm not coming to your wedding right and it's just bizarre (laughs) but I I was in that mindset because I just had no idea what life was like I mean you just life completely changes it it does completely change and and like I said it's an adjustment Um, it's an adjustment I mean you're you're a doctor so you you understand uh, what it means to to obsessively uh, pursue something Right. And, and and to be able to be, you know, hyper focused in a way that you may veer a little bit left or a little bit right. But ultimately, that goal is right there in front of you and you and you knock it out, you know, absolutely. Um, with the kids, it's, 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 it's a lot more dynamic. You know, with yeah. the family, it's a lot more dynamic. And I, I think it makes you appreciate, at least for me, if I'm speaking from personal experience, it just makes you appreciate the journey more. You know, everything has been about results right how, how many catches did you have how many touches did you touchdowns did you have how many catches do you want to have nobody ever talked about practice and and being excited about practice it was all about the game it was all about the results and because this new life is so dynamic it really makes you appreciate the journey, the journey. now the results yeah. are something that we're still going to to prioritize and pursue but now i find myself more more appreciative of the steps that actually take to make those things happen. I love that. I had a bit of an aha moment just now in you saying that, that you're right. When you get to results focus, you end up losing sight about how beautiful the practice is from time to time. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. So uh, can you share a bold action or one word kind of takeaway, something that people can start doing differently? Read. You know, I'm, I'm an avid reader. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from, from words, um, especially from people that, that Tony Robbins has 
my favorite quote of all time. He mm-hmm. says, success leaves clues. Mm-hmm. You don't have to you don't have to reinvent this on your own, right? I'm I'm a pretty new uh insurance agent um as far as this industry is concerned. But I don't have to I don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, there's a lot of guys who've been very successful in this industry um and doing it for a very, very long time. Mm-hmm. And they've left clues, right? They've left clues in books. They've left clues in podcasts. They've left clues in webinars. And it's just really taking that opportunity to, you know, ingest something that's going to give you a better output. For me, that's reading. Um, I really enjoy taking 15, 20, 30 minutes a day, just putting something into me that's going to give me a better output. But for you, whatever that is, I would say, uh, take the time to invest in yourself um, so that your output consistently becomes Stronger. what you want it to be. Love it. If our listeners and people watching want to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Uh, yeah, they can uh, email me at, uh, I'm, a, I'm a coach by nature. Uh, so they can email me at jr at coach Talver. My last name, coachtalver.com. Or, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm very, very active on on LinkedIn and, and, and Twitter. Um, find me at LinkedIn, J.R. Culver, search my name, or my Twitter handle is J.R. Culver16. Um, I'd love to speak to anybody that uh, has any questions or um, just wants to talk and strategize. Strategizing is one of my favorite things to do. So love it. anytime I can take a step back from the business, and talk about uh, strategy is something that I love to do. Well, thank you so much for sharing some of that strategy with our listeners and watchers today. I love meeting you and, and hope to connect with you again in the future. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You guys are doing a kick-ass job. Uh, <laughs> All right. I appreciate, uh, the content that you produce. Excellent. Thank you, JR. Bye. Let's head out to the shout out. If you aren't watching the podcast right now and you're just listening, you almost have to watch and and, and maybe you just did smile because that (laughs) <laughs> that shout out makes you smile. Speaking of being dad or being a parent, uh, those were my babies there giving us a shout out from the Bahamas and they do just bring the biggest smile to my face. Uh, so thank you again to JR for sharing some of his wisdom. It's my favorite time, your favorite time. It's time for us to kick some ass. Here's our top five. Number one is to be proud. If you're a dad, hop in that minivan and drive away because you should be proud of the things that you're accomplishing and proud of what you do and being proud of whatever trans transition that you've made. So whether it's from athlete to dad or from businessman to dad or from dad out back out to being an athlete or a businessman or having it all at the same time, be proud of the journey that you're on. Number two is to think differently. If you happen to be one that is a traditionalist or one that that thinks that certain gender roles are in certain places or certain people should act different certain ways, then now it's time to just step outside of that. Let it go. Loosen up. Think a little different. Let's have some fun. The world allows us this opportunity to be able to think differently. So stretch the mind. Number three is redefine the priorities. I love how JR referenced it as an ecosystem, whether it's in the home, it's in the office, it's in any place that you're at where you're creating success or want to achieve success, that understand and redefine those priorities and how you can balance within that. Number four is to have dialogue, create dialogue with the team and create dialogue with your work if you want to have more balance and be able to have some extracurricular time. Create dialogue with the people that you have in your home. I love the conversation that JR had with his wife about about being selfish, but also making sure that we're selfish about our pursuit of dreams and how that supports the overall household. And finally, love on a daddy. If you have and you know a daddy that's out there, give him some love. At least give him a high five. There's your top five kick ass. Mm 
Thank you again to JR for being a part of the podcast today. Really appreciate you coming in here and sharing some of your strategy and leaving us with some wisdom. You can get his contact information out on our site, strategichopbox.com, or hit us up on Instagram and Twitter. As always, until I see you again, get out there and kick some ass. 